wanted to make some remarks about the law of refraction. It's the law we call Snell's law. It's the law that tells us that the product of the refractive index and the sine of the angle in the incident medium is equal to the product of the refractive index and the sine of the outgoing angle in the refractive medium. So N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. This is the law that tells us that if light is traveling from lower refractive index to higher refractive index, so an example would be from air to water, then the light ray is bent towards the normal as it travels from air to water. As it travels from higher, lower refractive index air to higher refractive index water, it gets bent towards the normal. Uh, it reflects the fact also that light travels slower in the water compared to the air. The, the law also tells us that if light is traveling from water to air, which is light traveling from higher refractive index water to lower refractive index air, then the light will be bent away from the normal. The outgoing angle will be larger than the incoming angle. It also tells us that the speed of the light in the air is faster than the speed of the light in the water. Hidden within the law, and hidden within the mathematics of the law are some interesting cases, some interesting examples involving the angles of the incident rays and outgoing rays, the incident and refracted rays. And they, they emerge from the fact that the law is N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. They emerge from the fact that sine theta can never be bigger than one. Sine theta, in the context of Snell's law, has to be from zero to one. Theta has to be from zero to 90 degrees for the incident angle and the refracted angle. Because of the fact that sine theta can be only from zero to one in Snell's law, relating the incident and refracted angles. In the case of a light ray that's traveling from air to water, from lower to higher refractive index, the incident ray could have any angle with respect to the normal from zero to 90 degrees in the air side, but the refracted ray can will only have angles from zero to 49 degrees. There's only a limited range of refracted angles. The second consequence, if light travels from water to air, from higher refractive index to lower refractive index, the refraction only takes place over a limited range of incident angles in the water from zero to 49 degrees. Beyond 49 degrees, if the light strikes the boundary between the water and the air, there can be no refraction. There can be no transmission of the light through the boundary. Let's explore the example of refraction where light is traveling from air to water, from refractive index one of air to refractive index 1.33 of water. What I'm gonna do is draw a handful of light rays traveling from the air to the water. I'm gonna draw a handful of light rays at different incident angles traveling from the air to the water. And I'm gonna draw the incident angles and the refracted angles. And we'll discover an interesting feature of refraction from air to water. What we'll discover is what's called Snell's window. This is the first ray that I'm gonna draw. 
that undergoes refraction from air above the boundary to water below the boundary. It's a special ray. It's approaching at zero degrees to the normal, so 90 degrees to the inner face or the boundary between the two materials. And this ray emerges at zero degrees to the normal. It's actually a very interesting special case of Snell's law. If you look at Snell's law, it has the refractive index of the incident medium, N1 on the left-hand side here, refractive index of the uh, outgoing medium on the right-hand side here, that's, that's N2. And it says this product of the refractive indexes and the signs of the angles must be equal on the two sides. The way this is achieved for this special ray of zero degree incidence is that sine theta is zero on the left-hand side, making the left-hand side zero. And so sine theta two on the right-hand side also has to be zero. So this special ray here corresponds to a special case of Snell's law. It's actually when the left-hand side and the right-hand side are zero. In other cases, for other angles, one degree, 10 degree, 45 degrees, then the left-hand side and the right-hand side of Snell's law are non-zero. Here I've drawn a second ray uh, approaching the air-water boundary. And this second ray is refracted, its direction is changed when it passes from the air into the water. It's uh, bent towards the normal because it's traveling from higher refractive index to lower refractive index. Its incident angle is greater, its refracted angle is smaller. And uh, the relationship between these two angles is given by Snell's law upstairs here. In this case, sine theta one, sine theta two, are not zero, like the first ray that we drew, rather they're non-zero, and their ratios are determined by the ratio of the refractive index. Here's a third ray that approaches from the air side of the boundary and is refracted to the water side of the boundary. This is approaching at a much larger incident angle. Uh, again, it's bent, it's refracted, uh, and again, it's refracted to the north towards the normal because it's light rays traveling from lower refractive index to higher refractive index. And the relationship between the refracted angle here and the uh, incident angle here is again given by Snell's law. There's one more example of a ray. Here's a fourth ray, a very interesting ray that's approaching the boundary. This ray is approaching the boundary at the largest possible incident angle. This incident angle here is essentially 90 degrees. It's a ray that just grazes along the surface of the boundary between the air and the water until it strikes the boundary between air and water. And so its approach is 90 degrees. And when it's refracted, again, it's bent towards the normal. Uh, it's bent to a angle that's smaller than 90 degrees with respect to the normal is bent at an angle that's again given by the law of refraction up here. In this case, it's a special case of the law of refraction because sine theta one, this is now sine of 90 degrees. And so this left-hand side here is just N1, the refractive index in air, which is essentially one over here on the left-hand side. This refracted angle, which is the largest refracted angle that you can get in the water, you can get no larger angle, a refracted angle in the water, because you can get no larger incident angle than 90 degrees. This special angle is called the critical angle. And so I'm going to label it with a subscript C, it's theta C. And this for water, if you plug in the values of the refractive indices in the air and the water, for a, a air-water boundary where you've got refractive indices of 1 and 1.33, this, this angle is 49 degrees. 
Imagine you're a swimmer in the water. You're a diver in the water. You're beneath the surface of the water and you look upwards at the surface of the water. When you look upwards at the surface of the water from below the surface of the water, what you see is a, a bright disk. And this bright disk is what we call Snell's window. And this bright disk is this cone of light that you will see that is arriving from the atmosphere, from the air, incident light from the air or the atmosphere that's being refracted at the air-water boundary. And all that light is arriving within this cone that's determined by this 49 degrees maximum angle of refraction, this critical angle here. So there's a cone of light that you see. And beyond that light, well, beyond that light, you might just see darkness. Beyond that light, you can't see light that's come from the atmosphere. That's not possible, according to Cell's law. The light that's come from the atmosphere is contained within this cone here. And that's Snell's window into the atmosphere. And that's an effect you will see if you swim beneath the surface of the water and look up. You're a diver beneath the surface of the water and look up. You'll see this bright cone of light. That's where you're seeing outside into the atmosphere and surround it. You'll see, you'll see darkness. Let's now imagine the reverse situation. In the first situation, we had light that was incident from the air side of the boundary and traveled, was refracted into the water side of the boundary. Now let's instead have our light originating in the water side of the boundary and this light traveling to the air side of the boundary, being refracted from the water to the air. So. In the first case, we were traveling from a lower refractive index to a higher refractive index. In this second case, we're going to travel from a higher refractive index to a lower refractive index. Notice the only change I made in the diagram so far is that I labeled the water's refractive index as N1. That's the incident medium now. And the air's refractive index is uh, N2. That's the outgoing, the refracted medium. And again, I'm going to just draw some rays and explore the law of refraction. So the first ray I've drawn, again, is this special ray that approaches the boundary at an incident angle of zero degrees, and it's refracted from the boundary at a, a refracted angle of zero degrees. It's a ray that passes through the boundary between water and air. This is special ray whose path isn't or direction isn't changed. It's, uh, it's undeflected. Uh, in this case, again, Snell's law is working in an interesting way. Snell's law holds for this particular ray with the same angle, zero degrees in the incident and refracted media. It holds because the sign of the angles are zero in both cases. And so that's what makes the left-hand side uh, equal to one another, rather than it being that the product of n1 sine theta 1, where these terms are non-zero, and n2 sine theta 2, where these two terms are non-zero, uh, the, the products are equal to one another. In this case, it's the, just the fact that the, um, the, the signs of the angles are zero in both cases. Here's a second ray that I've drawn. It's uh, approaching the inner face at uh, an angle that's larger than zero degrees, uh, but still a fairly small incident angle. Uh, it's refracted at the inner face between the water and the air. Uh, and because it's traveling from higher refractive index to lower refractive index, it's being bent away from the normal. So the refracted angle upstairs here is bigger than the incident angle downstairs here and the relationship between the two angles theta one and theta two is given by Snell's law. Here's a third example of a ray that starts in the 
incident medium of water downstairs here and travels to the refracted medium of air upstairs here. It's striking the boundary at a larger incident angle and it's further bent away at an even larger refracted angle. And again, its path is changed because it's traveling from higher refractive index water to lower refractive index air. It's bent away from the norm. Here's a fourth ray, and actually a very special ray that's refracted from the interface between the water and the air. In this case, this fourth ray is at an even greater larger incident angle, and it's the incident ray that causes the refracted ray that's emerging on the air side to emerge on the air side at a outgoing angle, a refracted angle that's 90 degrees. So this outgoing ray just, just slides along the surface of the uh, air water boundary. This this is the 90 degree, the right, right angle here is the 90 degrees refracted angle. The incident angle that corresponds to this ray emerging at 90 degrees, that's a, that's a very special incident angle. And uh, we call that incident angle, as you now know, we call it the critical angle. And again, this critical angle here is at 49 degrees. So incident light, incident on the boundary from the water side that is incident at an incident angle of 49 degrees to the normal gets refracted and it's actually refracted so that the emerging ray is at 90 degrees to the normal on the air side. If you try and send light rays towards the, um, the boundary at angles greater than 49 degrees, but they can't be refracted at angles larger than 90 degrees because they wouldn't be entering the, the air. And so the process of refraction for light traveling from higher to lower refractive index actually halts at the critical angle. Larger angles can't undergo refraction. For larger angles, everything undergoes reflection. You get what's called total reflection or total internal reflection. So if we approach the boundary from the water side at an angle greater than 49 degrees, say 50 degrees, say 60 degrees, say 70 degrees, that light ray can't emerge into the air. That light ray is actually reflected back, back into the water. I draw an example of one of these totally internally reflected light rays here. It's striking the boundary at an angle that's greater than 49 degrees, incident angle greater than 49 degrees. It's unable to be transmitted or refracted into the air. Rather, it's 100% uh, totally internally reflected. Anyway, this was meant as an exploration of all the features of Snell's law. And we saw that within this, what looks like a simple law involving simple products of signs of angles and refractive indices in the two media, actually holds a lot of a lot of interesting features, a lot of uh, hidden secrets. Uh, one of them was this business of how Snell's law works for an incident angle of zero degrees, how it gives a refracted angle that's zero degrees, how for that special case, Snell's law does not cause any bending or refraction of the light rays. The other hidden secret in Snell's law was this critical angle. This critical angle is involved when light travels from lower refractive index to higher refractive index, for example, air or water. We saw the critical angle over here on the left-hand side diagram. And this critical angle is involved when light travels in the opposite direction from, from higher refractive index to lower refractive index. We saw this on the right-hand side here. 
In the case of light traveling from lower to higher refractive index, from air to water, whilst light is refractive when it approaches from any angle from zero to 90 degrees. So all of that light can be refracted and travel into the water. It, on the water side, you only see light traveling at refracted angles up to 49 degrees. You see nothing beyond 49 degrees. And it's the reason the explanation of Snell's window. On the right-hand side, where light is traveling in the opposite direction from the water side to the air side, from higher refractive index to lower refractive index, what we discovered here is you can have ref refraction of the light rays as it travels from higher refractive index to lower refractive index, but you can't have refraction over the full range of incident angles from zero to 90 degrees. You can only have it from zero to the critical angle. That critical angle was 49 degrees in the case of uh, a water air boundary. Uh, beyond that, beyond 49 degrees incident angle, there's, there's no refraction possible. There's no refraction possible. And so the only thing that's left is reflection of the light rays.